uh, called and entered, gotten on the line this morning. Tom, uh, I will want to get to your Atlanta Braves. Congrats on uh, being a World Series team. But uh, I know you asked the first question about Traylon Burks and, and Coach Pittman was giving you a hard times. Like, did you watch the game? And uh, <laughs> which, uh, I was I was uh, having a laugh about that. But um, you can't say enough about this young man and what he's done in his career at Arkansas. And uh, what do you think stands out the most to you about Traylon Burks and, and, and its play in his junior season? Uh, it could be his selflessness because he didn't want to talk about himself as much as just, you know, getting a win. I mean, even in a, a blowout type scenario, it was just like, hey, you know, uh, Warren Thompson and Hudson Henry had some great blocks for me on the edge, and the O-line did their job. And, you know, he, it's true. He took a sweep, and there was, some, there was a gap there. But he's got this uh, otherworldly kind of speed in which he was able to, you know, motor away. I mean, I think it might have been a safety who, you know, I don't know if he had a great angle, but he, he could have caught him, but not because Traylon Burks is super fast. So um, he just, he might be the best offensive player in the SEC, y'all. Certainly one of the best in the country. He's that gifted. Um, he could He could probably be a great running back if he worked at it he could probably be an outstanding quarterback just great hand eye uh, great love for the game and that speed is for a guy of his size his speed is just unreal Another guy got involved in the wide receiver room on Saturday, and that would be Keetron Jackson, the true freshman out of Roy City, Texas. Uh, Tom, how encouraging was it to see him get his first touchdown of the season? He's a, a four-star kid that a lot of people would like to see uh, kind of get going in these final four games. Oh, absolutely. It would be very helpful for that because Arkansas will need, in my view, a standout to be the, the guy next year because I don't know how Traylon Burks can turn down you know, the opportunity ahead of him could be a first round pick um and i put on social media yesterday my wife and i were driving through roy city texas didn't realize we were there at the time and <laughs> pulled into a bucky's and it said roy city okay here's the keytron jackson hometown so or stomping grounds um you know he's been working hard he's been one of the best edge blockers i know we got a, a holding call in one of the early games but it looked like it was a somewhat you know questionable holding call down the field and you want to reward a guy who keeps doing that and showing up and working hard in practice. And he had a short catch in a recent game. He had a catch in the opener, but that was it. And so to see him get a 29 yard touchdown, that was just a beautiful uh, throw. By the way, KJ Jefferson's best passing the other day was on the deep routes, which you don't see that very often, but he was four for six. And there was one drop for sure by Warren Thompson. Uh, yeah. So he was on the money with the deep balls and, Keytron got his first touchdown. Hopefully, hopefully, we'll see a lot of those in the coming games and years. Yeah, it seems like his uh, he, the longer shot he takes down the field is oftentimes more accurate than the the intermediate passing for KJ. Um, we we've had I don't know a, a number of calls or texts wouldn't be, but we you know there's some grumbling about the second half and the lack of points scored. You know, Arkansas scored all their points in the first half. What was your take on what Arkansas was and wasn't trying to do in the second half, Tom? Well, I mean, you want your second unit to go out there and move the ball. I mean, I don't think Sam would have minded if Horns being that group had scored on four out of five possessions or four out of four or five, five out of five possessions. Um, uh, but they didn't. And, and in fact, I think their, their O line was getting beaten on a lot of snaps because AJ Green did not have a lot of room to operate. He's used mm -hmm. to having some seems to start with, or at least being able to get to the edge, but, you know, UAPB had some good individual defenders. I thought their speed getting to the edge in certain situations was good. Um, uh, you know, a couple of their D linemen, they're a little bit undersized, but one guy forced a fumble on KJ, and another guy recovered it. So, I mean, they were they were a solid FCS team. I know they're, they're in a bit of a struggle right now, but they've got some injuries. Uh, but I, I think it would be you would mark it as concerning that they really couldn't get up ahead of steam on offense. Uh, the defense reserves played well. Uh, total yards second half ninety one seventy eight. When you cut three minutes off, I don't know who agreed to this, and I probably should have probed a little bit harder about you know was this the both coaches was this the ad I mean who who agrees 
to cut three minutes off each quarter. I didn't like it. I'm more of a purist. So um, it, it just, to me, it, it skews the statistics. I mean, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not into this, but I know the spread was 50, 51 points. And if you're uh, putting money on that game and there's three extra minutes per quarter, there's a better chance for Arkansas to cover. So that didn't happen. Yeah. Well, they only had 22 offensive snaps, they being the Razorbacks, had 22 offensive snaps in the second half uh, mm. on the five possessions, a fumble that ended the first one, turned over on downs after their longest drive, which was the second. After they got the interception, they turned it back over on downs after 10 plays, uh, then two punts, and then the the ball game ended uh, with Arkansas in possession. So uh, 22 plays total in the second half. I just know there was some grumbling about that. I, I, I didn't think Arkansas was – you know, pulling out all the stops or opening up the playbook. I mean, yes, you'd like to see more, but uh, it certainly didn't seem like there was a, a sense of urgency uh, by any of the parties. Yeah. Hey, let's get this thing over, get to our bye week, get out of here healthy. That, that's what we kind of sensed. And, yeah, I mean, you, you don't have Malik Hornsby out there running deep routes and, you know, throwing it all over the lot, and they didn't do that. Uh, but I would like to have seen, um, you know, a little bit more development for Malik in the passing game because – uh, let's just say KJ gets nicked up or something against Mississippi State. I mean, he's got to come in there and operate the whole scheme. Um, so I, I think I do believe, I really believe that the, the team had reached the point where they they wanted this bye week desperately. And in the second half of that game, it was like, okay, two 12 minute quarters and we have an, a bye week. Let's just get there. And so and probably mentally, yeah, yeah me- mentally throughout the whole squad, it was just like, let's just get get through with this half. Tom Murphy with us here on the Morning Rush. Tom, I want to step outside of Arkansas football for a sec and um, ask you a question nationally. Clemson Tigers drop another one, this time to the Pittsburgh Panthers on the road. And we, Tommy and I were asking the question of Ohio State, Clemson, and Alabama, those three with quarterback turnover, who is going to take the biggest step back? And uh, I don't know if either of us answered Clemson correctly, but uh, with Dabo Sweeney and what, what's going on there, is there any chance that he would consider the LSU job, in your opinion, just based on what's going on in wow. Clemson, since Clips in South Carolina right now? Well, that's a great question. And, you know, I had not heard his name mentioned. I'm sure his buyout is exorbitant. Uh, I, I don't know the details of it. Um, and I also don't know I, – I can't imagine that their recruiting has really dropped off. You know, that they, they, they don't have the skill talent that they need to be real, a really good team. Or, you know, in the trenches, um, perhaps uh, D.G. Uh, Uyunglele is not the well-rounded quarterback that Trevor Lawrence was and, and some of the you know, recent guys like Deshaun Watson there. So it's just a mystery how they've become like kind of average in the ACC overnight. And who knows? I mean, if, if Dabo's hearing a bunch of complaints and carping that he, he don't want to hear, uh, maybe he would think about it. But... I imagine that the, the, the calculus of all this between what his buyout would be, his loyalty to Clemson, because he, he is, by the way, I mean, he's a loyal, loyal guy. And the added on uh, difficulty of coaching at LSU, I did, that is a tough, tough deal. I mean, yeah, the recruiting's right there in your backyard, uh, but um, they know just like Arkansas and the SEC West, Arkansas's mm-hmm. first game back next week, y'all, against Mississippi State at home, it's not going to be easy. Uh, they've got to get one more win to get bowl eligible, but you don't want to get all the way to the Missouri game to have to get that sixth win. You want to knock it out right there, but Alabama's going to be tough, and, and LSU, it's a toss-up game for me, uh, Arkansas going down to Baton Rouge. So it, it, that's a tough deal, and I, I just can't imagine that uh, they would end up landing on Dabo. Yeah, a quick Google search, uh, and it lands on Forbes.com, but they're quoting ESPN, says Dabo Swinney's contract has a standard $4 million buyout from his side through 2023 oh. $3 million between 21 and 22. So uh, when when asking the question, does buy, Dabo Swinney have a buyout, according to what I'm reading here in just a quick Google search, he would owe $3 million right now to leave that job. So that's... That's not undoable. So, no, and, that, that is, and that if he is, were to return that, to Alabama, he would owe the school an extra 50% to buy the contract out. 
So that's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Um, a little, uh, little worried about him going back to where he was a receivers <laughs> coach. I actually covered him there with receivers coach. Oh wow! Okay, didn't know that. Yeah, Tom, I want to give your uh, Atlanta Braves their just due. And uh, Jock Peterson, I forgot he was a Los Angeles Dodger, now an Atlanta Brave, and. How how much did you enjoy him sipping on wine uh, on the on the graves of the Dodgers uh, following their Game Six win? Well, I, I didn't see it, um, y'all. On Saturday night after covering the game, we we drove to Texarkana, and I knew that it was four to one. But if I'm watching the game and it's tense situations like apparently happened in the seventh. I get too anxious. I get too messed up. And um, If they had lost that game, then I wouldn't have slept at all Saturday night. So I went to bed not knowing the result of the game. But wow. I did know if I heard my phone text alerts going off during the night, that meant the Braves probably won. And I did hear that. And I'm like, okay. I actually said, all right, I'm not even going to look. This is good. And I went back to sleep. <laughs> I did wake up at 2.30 and – Checked how it happened and read all my te- texts, and it was it was wonderful. I loved it. That's pretty. That's pretty fun. Well, I'm happy for you, man. Hopefully, they can uh, bring back one home for you this uh, this World Series. Yeah, when your when your franchise wins an unexpected one, it, it, even just say the National League pennant, it's it's so satisfying. When we weren't even over 500 until August, so it was just crazy. Yeah. So, what's bye week look like for Tom Murphy? Sounds like you're on a little Texas trip for a. Uh, Little little R and R this week. But yeah, my wife has a cousin deep deep in West Texas, and that's where we're headed. We're in Abilene right now, headed down, and um, so we're just going to enjoy ourselves for a few days and ride ride horses, and maybe see the Rio Grande, and then head home. All right, eat some brisket for us while you're there. We'll do. We had some great Mex Tex food last night; just outstanding. All right. We'll travel safe back, and we'll talk to you later on. We're back, and better than ever, a new web interface to start the basketball season and more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all basketball and football action this season. Head to the new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BELIEVE50 to receive your bonus. That's B-L-E-A-V-50 to receive your bonus. From basketball, football, and baseball postseason, NHL, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet Online, where the game starts. 